Hello, you beautiful people, and welcome to Serena Speaks, but clearly can't sing. It's quite sad, really. I always want to know how to sing. But anyway, this video focuses on medical emergencies that you see in community. Now, these are instances that I have seen firsthand, which means that maybe you might see them firsthand. So it's really important to know what to do in case you are faced with any of these situations. Now, before I begin, number one rule with any emergency that you are faced is to stay calm. Because if you're calm, then everyone else will be relatively calm. But as soon as you start to panic, everyone else will start to panic. And given that you're the pharmacist, or you will be the pharmacist in store, people are going to turn to you to know what to do. So keep calm. Now, first of all, we're going to go over angina and um, myocardial infarction or heart attack. And in both situations, you do the same kind of thing. So first and foremost, if a person presents with either angina or heart attack symptoms, you need to give them aspirin straight away. Ideally, aspirin 300 milligrams, either dispersed or chewed. Why dispersed or chewed? Well, because if someone's in that much pain and they're going through that situation, giving them a tablet and then a glass of water isn't going to be the easiest thing to do. So ideally chewed, if you don't have chewed, then dispersible. And if you don't have the 300 milligram, you only have the 75 milligram, use those 75 milligrams to make up that 300 milligram. In addition to that, a person might need a GTN spray, sublingual spray, given under the tongue, one or two sprays when required. Or in the case of angina, they might have GTN tablets. Um, so if a person has a heart attack and they're discharged from hospital, sometimes on their um, hospital prescription, as well as being given aspirin, beta blockers, um, hypertensive medication, uh, cholesterol medication and an antiplatelet, so our standard five, they may also be given a GTN sprayer to keep at home if heart attack symptoms ever do crop up again. And that's really important to have on standby. And what's also worth mentioning is that with the GTN spray, make sure that, for example, when you're doing your medicine use reviews with patients, that their GTN spray is still in date because sometimes patients will keep it in their medicine cupboard, they'll keep it for years because they won't have to use it. And then unfortunately something might happen, they may find that they're in a situation where they do need to use it and it's out of date. So we don't want them to be in that situation. The same principle applies to EpiPens. Again, EpiPens is something that you keep on standby just in case. And if you ever do need to use it, you need to make sure that it's not out of date. So really important to keep that in mind and tell your patients that if they, whenever you are giving a GTN spray or an EpiPen, or if you are doing an MUR, for example. So, uh, as I said, aspirin, GTN. With um, a heart attack, when a patient is in hospital, they may need to be given some kind of antiemetic, such as metoclopramide, and a form of pain relief. So, for example, diamorphine or morphine. But that's later on when they end up going into hospital. Now, in terms of asthma, I've done a couple of videos going over asthma, but in the cases of emergencies, so for example, a person is having an asthma attack, first and foremost, we need to give them their blue inhaler. If they're a child, we might need to give them a spacer device or a close fitting mask, and you'd give them two to 10 puffs um, every 10 to 20 minutes as required. Now, when I say two to 10 puffs, that doesn't mean keep pressing their inhaler 10 times. It means they use their inhaler once, do their technique, breathe out, and again, second time, and again, third time. And they keep doing that until their symptoms do get under control. Or we might need to give them nebulized, salbutamol nebulized solution. And the doses vary depending on the age. So if it's a child under four years old, it'll be 2.5 milligrams every 20 to 30 minutes. If they are five to 11 years old, it would be uh, 2.5 to five milligrams, again, every 20, 30 minutes. And if they're above 12 year olds or they're an adult, it would be five milligrams every 20 to 30 minutes. Now they may need terbutaline solution, nebulized solution instead of the salbutamol. And in all cases, they would end up having to be given steroids. So either in the form of prednisolone tablets or if it needs to be IV, then it'd be hydrocortisone and high flow oxygen needs to be made available to them as well. The patient may end up needing ipratropium nebulized solution as well. So now let's move on to anaphylaxis. Now, 
Anaphylaxis is again is one of those situations where somebody may rush in, they're having an attack and you need to act quickly but calmly. And it's so important that you know how to use an EpiPen. Now you do get the Jext pens as well, but I'm going to focus on the EpiPens because I have one in my hand. Now an EpiPen is made up of two sides. We have a blue side, although this lighting might not show it, but it is blue, I promise you, and an orange side. The way that you use it is in your dominant hand, so mine is this hand, you take off the blue lid. I'm not going to do that, but just pretend that I have. You can take off the blue lid and now it's ready to use. And this orange end, it looks like an arrow. And that's because that's the end that you're going to jab into the patient. So if a person does come in with anaphylaxis, it's important to lie them down and have their legs in the air if they can. Well, maybe rest them on a chair or something, because at least that way all the oxygen is going to their brain. And you need to get someone to call 999 immediately. You yourself don't call them because you have this situation to deal with. Get a colleague, get someone else around to ring 999 and have them on loudspeaker. So whilst you're dealing with this, they're dealing with that and the ambulance can come quickly on their way. Now, you're holding it. How are you going to jab it? Well, this is, pretend this is their thigh. Ideally, you need to place about 10 centimetres away and you're going to jab it at a 90 degree angle. And you need to keep it there once, pretend that I actually jabbed myself. Once you've jabbed it there, you need to hold it for at least 10 seconds. And when you're in a panic situation, you might count to 10 wrong. And it sounds really silly, but because it is quite a panicky situation, you might be tempted to count as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. OK, pull out. No. Count Mississippi. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. At least, you know, properly you have counted at 10 seconds. Take the EpiPen out, discard of it accordingly and get the person's hand to massage that area. You don't need to massage that area for them. They can massage that themselves and monitor them. Watch them for about a good five, 10 minutes. And if they need another EpiPen, give them another EpiPen. It's no harm to give them a second one. And be careful that you do know which side to use because this could, the orange side could be tempted to look like a lid. And I know of pharmacists who have grabbed on that end and they've ended up injecting themselves. And you know, then, then you're having to still deal with that situation as well as a person that's on the floor. So remember, blue, is the top that we take out. Orange is the point that we, we don't want to touch that end. That is the end that is going to go into the patient. It looks like an arrow, so it's being pointed towards the patient. Now, as well as that, when the ambulance come, they might give them high flow oxygen as well as chlorphenamine, usually by IV, and they may end up needing hydrocortisone by IV as well. Now, these EpiPens, they are absolute magic and they are lifesavers. So do treat them with respect and especially with the um, EpiPens that you have available in stock usually ends up being that the yellow ones are for adults and the green ones are for children. So make sure you are familiar with the two. And as I've said it before, and as I'll probably say again many times, you're not learning all these things just for the exam. You are learning this for real life, too. So do make sure that you are familiar with how to use all these different products. So moving on to hypoglycemia in diabetic patients. So a person is hypoglycemic, that means that they don't have enough glucose in them, they don't have enough sugar in them, so we need to give that. So either Lucozade or um, Coca-Cola, any form of fizzy drink that isn't sugar-free, we need to give them. Or we could give them three to six sugar lumps. After that, we'd wanna give them something a bit more substantial, such as a biscuit or a sandwich. But this is if they are responsive. If they're not responsive or they're unconscious, then just like we can give an EpiPen during anaphylaxis, we can give a patient a glucagon injection, and that will either be subcutaneously or by intramuscular. And again, we'd call the ambulance and they would um, give the patient glucose, usually by intravenous infusion. Now, in terms of seizures, if a person pre presents with a seizure or a convulsion that lasts more than five minutes, we have two options. We can either give them diazepam rectal solution or we can give them midazolam oral mucosal solution, which is given by buccal administration and it can be repeated once after 10 minutes if necessary.
So those are the main medical emergencies that can present in a community in a community setting. And to be honest, it can present in any setting. You could be on a tube and someone could have a heart attack, for example. So it's good to be aware and to know what to do. And hopefully by now you would have gone on a first aid course as well. So you will be first aid trained. Um, because again, all of these, it's not just for the exam, it's to know in real life as well, to know when you are practicing um, or even when you're just walking out and about on the street. So you are a professional, you can help people out. So hopefully you have a clear understanding of what can be given if these um, situations ever do get presented to you. So hope you found this video useful. And if you did, why not give us a thumbs up, give us a like, share, subscribe, visit my Facebook page, visit my Twitter page, and until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revising.